What's going on guys? Welcome back to an episode of Fishing with Flair. Today I have a video for you. In this one I am going to talk about the top five things that you can do to become a better bass fisherman or fisherman in general. Um, particularly bass fishing since that's what I, uh, that's what I like to do, um, tournament bass fishing and stuff like that. But anyways, um, these are the top five things that you can do that are just general basic things. Um, if you're st whether you're starting out or you're an experienced angler and you're wanting to step up your game, these are the top five recommendations that I would give to someone that's looking to get better at bass fishing, um, in which I think, personally, anyone can get better. I think Kevin Van Dam can get better. I think Brandon Polnick can get better. You know, you, just because you know you, you see these pros on TV and stuff doesn't mean they can't get better. It doesn't mean there's people that aren't better than them. Um, so bass fishing is never ending. It's never you can't ever master bass fishing. It, it's not possible. But these are the top five things that you can do to make yourself better, whether you're tournament fishing or just um, having fun out on the lake. Um, no particular order in these five, um, but I'm just gonna go through them. So for number one, I have spend time on the water, and that one. I have because there you can't beat spending time on the water. It's a saying practice makes perfect. When you're practicing fishing, you're out on the water. You're not sitting at home watching YouTube videos or um, organizing tackle or that kind of stuff or reading articles. You're out on the water. So there's nothing that can beat time out on the water. Um, practice makes perfect in every sport um, and bass fishing is no different. Um, the one thing I'd say about spending time on the water is you need to educate yourself before you spend time on the water. If you don't know anything about bass fishing, um, that will lead into my number two. Number two is uh, watch videos or read articles and or read articles. Um, YouTube videos, um, whether it's some of my videos, which some of them are helpful. Otherwise, you know, there's tons of YouTubers out there that make awesome, awesome videos, much better than mine, um, that you can check out. Uh, there's plenty of thousands and thousands of articles online that talk about different tips and techniques for the time of year. Um, you know, Bass University, I've talked about that one before. They have just a ridiculous amount of information on their website. Um, that's like some YouTube channels, of course, I'm sure you guys know Fluke Master. Um, and there's a couple other ones. A new one that I uh, found is uh, Shea Baker. He's, um, he, he kind of, I think he works for GoPro. I know he uses a lot of GoPros and he's like one of the editors. Um, for the Bassmaster Elite Series or something like that. I don't know his exact profession, but I know he uses a lot of GoPros and he travels with the Elite Series and does a lot of cool work. Well, he made a YouTube channel not too long ago, has made a few videos um, fishing with Brandon Polnick, and he has some really awesome educational videos too as well. So go check him out. Shea Baker is his name. You can look him up on YouTube. But anyways, so that's number two. Watch videos. So especially like right now, it's dead of winter right now. It's like 10 degrees outside. You can't do nothing. Um, I usually spend some of my free time watching videos for pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, stuff that's going to be coming up, um, some cold water fishing and stuff like that. So, um, although I said spend time on the water is probably the most important one, you have to educate yourself before you spend time on the water because otherwise you're just wasting your time if you don't know what you're doing. Um, number three, surround yourself with people who are better than you. Um, I can't stress that enough that, you know, as much, as, as much fun as it is to win tournaments, I love winning tournaments just as much as the next, you know, competitive bass angler. But here's the deal: if you join a bass club or you're in a high school bass fishing team, and let's say you're the best kid on the team or the best guy on the team, and you win every single tournament, you're not going to get any better um, just by winning tournaments. Yeah, you might learn a little bit on that, you know, the eight-hour window that you're on the water for that tournament, but you're not going to learn anything from any of the guys. If you, I mean, bass fishing a little different. I would never. I don't think I've ever seen a scenario where some dude just dominates this uh, the trail, but what I'm saying is I like to join, like I've joined a couple of adult bass fishing clubs in which 90% of the guys know more than me about bass fishing. They're all been doing it for years and years and years. So although I go to tournaments, you know, a couple tournaments a month and I usually get my butt handed to me, never even come close to winning on the majority of them, I get to come home after the tournament and sit down and think, what did I learn today and what can I change for the next tournament and constantly evolve um, the stuff that I know. So surround yourself with people that are better than you. That's another tip of advice that I give a lot of people is don't be, you know, like I said, it's a lot of fun winning tournaments, a lot of fun thinking that you're the best and stuff like that, but you're not going to get any better. You need to, you need to fish with the, the big leagues and the, the, find the toughest bass club that has the goodest or the best guys on their, on the bass fishing team or the bass club or whatever and go fish with them. Even though you may be the worst bass fisherman on, in the club, it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll learn better that way and you'll learn more. Um, that leads into number four, join a bass club. Uh, if you're really against 
competitive bass fishing, then yeah, don't join a bass club. But if you're just, even if you're really not looking to become a professional bass angler, uh, maybe you just like having fun, uh, you learn so much in bass club, especially if you're a co-angler. If you're in the back of the boat and you just get to watch the dude up in the front and you get to have fun, you get to catch some fish, costs a little bit of money, but also you have the chance to win some money if you do well in tournaments, but you learn just a ridiculous amount. Um, those kind of go hand in hand, surround yourself with people that are better than you and join a bass club. Um, you just get to, you know, it's just like being, in, imagine being in the back of Kevin Van Dam's boat when he's, you know, fishing in a late series or whatever. You know, the amount of knowledge that you would learn is priceless. It's, there's not a video out there that would be able to mimic that um, or give you the same information. So, uh, stuff like that. Join a bass club. And the last one is once you kind of gotten into fishing a little bit more, once you fish a lot of fish tournaments, my suggest you fish your weaknesses. That's the only way you're going to get better. Like me personally, I consider myself a very good frog fisherman. Uh, top water frog, that's kind of what I've been doing all my life. I started out frog fishing. I still frog fish to this day. I have a frog rod that has a couple frogs set on at all times uh, during the season. And, you know, I fish probably five days a week. I'm th throwing a frog somewhere in the summer. And that's just, you know, all the tournaments that I fish, I usually throw frogs, both high school championships last year. that I placed second place. Both tournaments were uh, a frog played a huge factor. I think I know that really well. And so, you know, when I, if I'm trying to better myself, I'm not going to go out and keep throwing the frog all the time. Yeah, can I catch some fish? Yeah, well, I'll probably catch more fish on that than, let's say, a drop shot. Yeah, but then there's going to be a tournament that comes time where the drop shot's going to be beating the frog, and I'm going to get my butt handed to me because I'm not very good at drop shotting. So, like, personally, the drop shot is probably one of my biggest weaknesses next to maybe, like, a jerk bait. I'm not very good at either one of those. Um, so it does not do that good to just to fish your strengths. I would say in tournaments, of course, fish your strength fish your strengths, um, but I'm talking about just bettering yourself in general, uh, fish your weaknesses, you know, I'm not very good, I'm okay finesse fishing, maybe with a shaky head, but like drop shot, I'm not very good at, jerk bait fishing, I'm not a very, I'm not very good at, um, deep water fishing, brush, rock piles, I'm pretty terrible at, I'm a shallow water angler, so if I'm really trying to get better, um, well around myself, then I'm going to go out with a deep crankbait, you know, a heavy football jig, a drop shot, and a jerk bait, and those are the only lures I'm going to bring, I'm not going to bring anything else in my boat, and I'm going to go out, um, for eight hours and try to catch some fish. And that's the only way you're really going to get better and evolve as a bass tournament angler. So this is the top five. Uh, I know it's kind of a lot of a talking, um, but hopefully you guys were able to kind of follow along and learn a little bit. But like I said, um, just to recap, spend more time on the water. Uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, you can't watch enough YouTube videos. You're not going to get better just watching them. you got to go out there and practice them. Surround yourself with people that are better than you. Go join a bass club. Um, with you know some of the best guys that you can find and go fish with them, fish alongside them, ask them questions and gain knowledge that way. Fish your weaknesses, um, don't fish your comfort zone all the time. Tournament fishing, yeah, fish your comfort zone, but if you're just fun fishing, try something else. Uh, watch YouTube videos and read articles. I named a couple YouTube channels, a couple websites, stuff like that. You just use Google. Um, but yeah, so those are the top five things. Um, it's just kind of a video. If you guys have any videos you wanted me to, to make, you know, I'm kind of running low on video ideas. It's the dead of winter, and I'm getting pretty bored. I'm making, you know, the unboxing videos all the time, and so I try to throw some videos like this in there, just little tips and tricks here. And so, if you have a question um, or a video that you'd like me to make that's like similar format to this, you know, just a top five ways to do something else, or your, you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to see, go ahead and comment. I read every single comment. I may not get back to you, but um, go ahead and leave a comment for any suggestions. So that's it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.